Hello, Believer's House. It's a great day today. I am so excited. As you can tell, I'm not in the studio today. I'm reaching you from our worship center, the future home of Believer's House, 1555 Lucas View Road. That's where I am this afternoon reaching you from. We are so grateful to God uh, for this space that he has blessed us with. And uh, we will give God all the praise. I will give you a lot of updates this morning. Uh, and we will get into the word of God together. Let's join Minister Kemi Sola Pearl. She is in the studio. She will lead us in a song of worship. And I want you to put away every distraction. You know, you can take this, this time now to just share the link of the service and let the rest of our friends know that we are on right now. And then I will be back to share the word of God with you.
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus the name of Jesus Powerful, powerful name it is, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I can sing that song all day, uh, especially today, and we thank God for what he is doing in our lives, for what he's doing in the life of our church. Uh, uh, this morning, like I told you a moment ago, I'm reaching you right now from the future home of Believer's House. Can you believe that? Well, I'm, I'm right now in our auditorium, the auditorium of our worship center here at 1555 Lucas View Road in Amon's Plains, Nova Scotia. Uh, God is good, God is good. That's all I can say, God is good. This space is a, is a 2,000 square foot auditorium where I am right now. I'm just in one corner. Uh, hopefully we can show you some, some images later on. Um, just in one corner of the auditorium here. And uh, this, 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 this is a beautiful space, honestly, but it needs a lot of love. <laughs> it does need a lot of love, but uh, gradually we're going to put you know, all of those finishing touches to it. Uh, to make it uh, home indeed. Uh, this, is, this is home. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. And I thank God uh, for making this all work together. You know, and that means that next Sunday, can you believe this? Next Sunday, we're going to be gathered together here. Now, like I said, this, this space is not yet perfect. All right? Uh, it's not completely finished. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's in good shape, no doubt. Uh, but there is a there's a red wall just to my side here <laughs> that I don't like, you know, and a few other things, you know, that that you know we need to just uh, change colors and make things conform with the, with the brand of the church and all of those kind of little things here and there that we want to do. But that will not stop us, uh, you know, from having our family meeting. So next week we're just going to call it a family meeting. All right, uh, it's it's our first interest meeting that we're having, and what we want to do next Sunday is to make sure that every single one of us that call believers house home that you can come into this space and we can meet one another we can get to fellowship together of course like i said this is a this is, this is a big space uh, for for the size of our church at, at, at this time okay so we will be able to you know socially distance you know everybody can sit uh, apart we will provide masks we will provide sanitizers you know and all of those kind of things so you don't have anything to, to worry about or to fret about, okay? So we, we, to everything will be in order. Yeah, but we just want to be able to gather together and just to, to you know, to worship God together, you know, and, and, and look into his word together and then just meet one another. Have, uh, and a few other things that uh, I, I want to talk about next week uh, to be able to start to plan towards the days that we're going to be meeting here to pray in this building, to pray concerning the launch of our church. We're going to go on a 21-day journey, uh, but it's not the way you know it, okay? So I will explain that to the family next week. So we will not be here online next week. That's what I'm trying to say now. For those of you who are at IFAM, you will not find us here online next week. Uh, we might be able to show you clips of what happened, you know, maybe the message uh, or, you know, just highlights. We'll put it up on, on YouTube after the fact, but we won't be on like this, you know, at, at, at two o'clock. We will be here, we'll be meeting, we'll be having our family meeting next Sunday. So I just wanted to let you know that so that you can prepare for that. Uh, it will be a great time. I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. So it's not for the general public. Let me just make it clear again. Uh, it is for the, you that are watching right now. If you're watching right now and you're in Halifax, it means you already know about our church, okay? So you are invited. But we're not going to go out of our way to invite other people uh, because we, we want this, this place, you know, to conform to, to the code and all of those different things. So we're not expecting more than maybe 12 or 14 of us, all right? Just those of us that are members of our church as are today. Uh, those are the people that are invited for this. So, but if you are listening to me now, it means one way or the other you've got to know about us. So you are, you are invited, you can show up, uh, but you would need to register, okay, because that's, that's the government's uh, guidelines. You need to register so that you can do contact tracing. So go on our website, uh, uh, under the Believer's House tab there, just register that you're going to come so that we can, we can prepare for you. And beyond just preparing, it's the government's requirement now because of COVID-19 so that they can trace where people have been and all of those different things, you know, so that they, they, if they come and say how many people were at the service, we can easily show them a list of the people that came. So that's, that's why it's so important that you, that you register. So 
right right uh, by tomorrow i think by tomorrow uh, 12 noon it should be available the registration link should be available uh, for you to be able to register to say that you're coming next sunday please don't forget you need to register for the service okay please don't forget that uh, but if, if you forget or for any reason you don't when you come to the door we will make you register before you get into the building okay so that's very important uh, yeah so uh, just a bit of housekeeping uh, out of the way there uh, honestly I am just I'm just so excited I'm so 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 excited uh, there's still a lot of milestones to go uh, but God is helping us God is helping us this uh, this space here took us a while, took a while with, you know, all of the negotiations uh, back and forth, but God was faithful. God has been proving to us that he is with us on this journey. So I have no doubt in my heart that uh, God is with us and God is helping us. Uh, so today we're going to conclude our series, uh, This Is Us, uh, for, for this this time we'll conclude the series. I still have a lot of messages that I want, that I want to share with you uh, concerning the, the nature of our church and what it is that God, God has been saying to me. So that will come in the coming weeks. But for this series, we're going to wrap it up today. Uh, and then we will next week, we'll have our family meeting and then we'll be back online the week after. We'll be back online the week after and then we'll keep going like that just to kind of build the momentum uh, until we, are, we, 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 we start out Sunday morning services leading up to the launch of the church in April. All right, so all of that out of the way. Uh, if you're ready, we're going to say a prayer in a moment, but I want us to take our confession. Uh, by now, you should, you should have started to memorize this confession by now, okay? So let's say this together. Remember, put away distractions. Say it with me, okay? Don't just listen to me say this confession. So let's say it together. Say every day. Come on, say every day. And in every way, I'm becoming more like Jesus. I am becoming more like Jesus. One more time. I am becoming more like Jesus in my thoughts, in my words, in my actions. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say it one more time. Say every day and in every way. I'm becoming more like Jesus. I am becoming more like Jesus. I am becoming more like Jesus. Say in my thoughts, in my words, and in my actions. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we approach your word this afternoon once again like people that have found a great treasure. We ask that you give us eyes that see Jesus, give us ears that hear his voice, give us hearts that understand who we are in him and who he is in us. I ask, Lord, that you anoint me and this lips of clay of mine, that your word will come with simplicity, but with accuracy and boldness, that it will be unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force, so that at the end of this, O oh God, your people will be edified and your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, go with me again to the book of Colossians. We've been in Colossians for the last two weeks. This is the final, final part of this series. The title of the message, if you're taking notes, is This Is Us. This is us. We've been talking about the DNA of our church, the DNA of Believer's House. And this is the final part of this that I want to share with you today. Colossians chapter 1, from verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, he says, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you, as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruits, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. Now, if, if you're just listening to this message for the first time, I, I want to I ask you to catch up with us, you know, go back. Uh, uh, those messages are available on, on YouTube. Watch the first and the second part so that you can catch up with us. I don't want to take too much time to, to kind of go over everything. We have talked about a lot of things here already. You know, I don't want to spend too much time to recap that. But the messages are available and it's also available on our audio podcast platform. Okay, uh, wherever you get your pod podcast from, just look for Search Out Believer's House Audio Podcast and you will be able to listen to the messages. And I believe the podcast also comes with the total you know, you know, service, the full service, the worship is included in that as well, at least for now. So please do that, okay, so that we can move it along here. And we've talked about you know, quite a number of things. We've, we've, we've talked about faith, we've talked about, about uh, love for all the saints, we've talked about the fact that we're praying people, we've talked about the fact that people pray for us, people thank God for us, people hear of us. You know, so we, we did all of that. And, uh, 
And the, the last thing we spoke about last week was that we are people full of the hope of heaven, uh, that we are, we, are, we, are not, we, are, we are not so heavenly focused that we are earthly irrelevant, and, and we are not so earthly conscious that we lose focus of heaven. So all of that we've already covered. So today, I want to give you the final three points. Um, uh, by now, you should know that I love to shoot three-pointers, <laughs> okay? So the, the final three points for this message uh, is what I want to give you today. And the first one is this. You'll find it in Colossians chapter 1, verse 5b, the second part of verse 5. He says, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, we talked about this last week, and then he says, of which you heard before, in the word of the truth of the gospel. He says, which you heard before, in the word of the truth of the gospel. So, we are a people that love the word. We are a people that love the word of the truth of the gospel. When we hear the truth of the gospel, we, we are in love with it. We love the word of God here. Uh, we are not a people that, that run away from the word. We love the word of God. We are a people that love the word of God. The word of God is priority for us. The word of God is priority for us. We, we give the word of God first place in our lives. It is priority. We give it first place. Uh, the word of God is not something that you know we we we, we do if we have enough time. You know when when we have we have services uh, and worship gatherings and then we do all the other activities and then if there's enough time we quickly squeeze in the word. No, that's not the way we are here. The word of God is our priority because we know that the word of God is is the way that God changes people's lives. So we we, we give priority to the word of God. We give priority to the word of God. We study to show ourselves approved unto God. Uh, we, 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 we appreciate the messages that come from the pulpit. We're going to be preaching really good messages. We will prepare good messages that will edify people, uh, that will build up people. But beyond that, uh, we are a people that go back to study the Word of God for ourselves because that's the way we're going to grow onto maturity. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth rightly dividing the word of truth so we, we spend time with the word of god uh, when we when we do our devotions when we, we, we in our in our private space uh, we give place to god's word we read the word of god we study the word of god on our own that is who we are remember this we are talking about who we are we are we are, we are taking this by faith that this is who we are this is the dna of our church, of Believer's House. And when we say church, we are not talking about this space. <laughs> we are talking about you and I. We are the church. So this is who we are. We are people that love the Word of God. We love the truth of the Gospel. We love the truth of the Gospel. So, you know, there, there's so much out there now in terms of, in terms of theology, uh, in terms of the way people interpret scriptures. But we are going to be a people that focus on the truth of the Gospel. We don't take everything hook, line, and sinker. We're not just going to come and listen to the messages, that, you know, or, or from the pulpit and take everything as though, you know, the, whatever Pastor Sheon says is the final authority. The Word of God is our final authority, not what I have to say, not what Dorcas has to say, not what any of the, of the ministers that will be coming through by the grace of God will have to say. It is what the Scriptures say that we go by. The book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 11, if you look at it uh, in the New Living Translation, it says, And the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. Open-minded doesn't mean they accepted junk. Listen to what it means by open-minded. It says, They listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. So if I want to put it, you know, interpret it for us, it would be the people of Believer's House were more open-minded than those in wherever, <laughs> you know, and they listened eagerly to Pastor Sheon's message. They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Sheon and Dorcas were teaching the truth. So this is very, very important. We need to be able to, and it doesn't mean you're undermining anybody, you know. We, we're all learning on the journey together. So we need to go back on our own and search the scriptures. Anything that we teach here, you have to be able to go back by yourself and search the scriptures to make sure that what we are teaching is the truth of the gospel. We don't just depend on the word that's coming from the pulpit. Okay, we thank God for that. But we study on our own in order to grow into maturity. The word of God is given center stage and it is top priority in our gatherings. Whether we're having a worship uh, concert 
or we are having a regular service or, or prayer meetings, the Word of God is going to take center stage. The Word of God is not something that we will just squeeze in, you know, if we have enough time. No, no, no. We will give priority to the Word of God. And this is something we have to get used to. This is who we are. Uh, it must never be an afterthought or something we do, you know, if we have enough time. I'm stressing this because it is so important. I want you to get into you that this is who we are. This is who we are. The Word of God is a priority for us here. Uh, the Word of God is giving reverence and awe in our gatherings and in our homes. So in our homes, we gather around our, our, with our children. We share the scriptures. We, we love the Word of God. That's, that's very, very important. Okay? So let me move it along. Point number two, if you're taking notes. We are a people that bring forth fruits. We are a people that bring forth fruits. We bring forth fruits. Colossians chapter 1, if you look at the first part of verse 6, it says, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. So it, it speaks about bringing forth fruits, bringing forth fruit. Our lives must be our greatest fruits. Uh, remember, we are, we are called to people. We are called to people. We are, we are called to lead people to Jesus, to make them more like him and to see them lead others to him. So it's very, very important. Our lives must be our greatest fruit. Uh, that the testimony of, of, of our lives being changed, of our lives being transformed, of the results that are coming from our lives. This, this is who we are. Uh, our lives must reflect exactly what we preach. Our lives must reflect exactly what we preach. We are people of faith. We are people that love all the saints. Uh, we are not the people that hold grudges with anybody. You know? So we, we, our lives have to bear that fruit of love. And people need to see that this is exactly who we are. We mix the word of God with faith and it bears fruits in our lives. We mix the word of God with faith and it bears fruit in our lives. We must bear fruit in all of these areas. Spiritually, we are bearing fruit. Uh, in, in, the, in ministry, you know, because we, remember we said our approach is come, grow, and go. So as people come in, they are, they are built up with the Word of God and the Spirit of God, and then they go out into ministry, whatever that looks like for them. Whatever it is that God has called them to do, they, they go out into that, to do that. So in, in the spiritual aspect of things, uh, we must bear fruit, you know, in our ministry, in the individual ministry. And some of us are going to have pulpit ministry. Uh, 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 we will not shy away from that. We, we would encourage people to go into that. And, and for the numerous ones that are not going to have pulpit ministries, that is going to be in the marketplace, you know, in, in entertainment, in whatever area it is, your lives must bear fruit in, in your ministry and your spiritual lives must bear fruit. Uh, you know, you, 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 we must see the, the fruit of the character of Christ. We are growing into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Remember that. So that, that our lives must bear that kind of fruit. In our relationships, uh, our lives must bear fruit. In our marriages, marriage is something that my wife and I are extremely, extremely passionate about, the sanctity of marriage, uh, and to help Christian marriages grow, to teach people how to raise their families in the household of faith. So this is something that we are, we are going to really emphasize here, uh, and that our lives must bear fruit in our relationships, in our relationship with people, uh, and in our marriages with our spouses. In our health, our lives must bear fruit. Uh, we've, we've spoken about the fact that we're going to be sharing practical things here, uh, and so don't be surprised from we'll be having lots of seminars, workshops, like things like that uh, are going to be things that we'll be doing on, on, on a regular, on a regular, because we want our lives to bear fruit in different areas, you know, of, of all of these things. And, and by the grace of God, we're doing these things, you know, in, in sync. In a, in a structured way that things balance up in our lives so that people are not lopsided. You don't have people who are just spiritually sound, but their health is suffering. Or you have people who are, you know, who, whose marriages are doing well, but their finances are struggling. So in your career, in your finances, you must bear fruit. You know, whole, holy, holistic fruits uh, is what we're speaking about. So spiritually, we must produce other disciples because this is our assignment, to make disciples. That's our assignment. We must, we must place emphasis on that, to be witnesses, of Jesus and to, to, to make our lives bear this kind of fruit. So all I've been saying in this second point is basically that our lives must bring forth fruit. Our lives must bring forth fruit. But the, the most important one of those fruits is making disciples, leading other people to Jesus Christ, you know, and, and watching them grow into maturity so that they can also go out there and lead others to Jesus. So our lives must bear fruit. Number three, as I begin to tie this up, we know the grace of God. We are a people that know the grace of God. We know the grace of God. Uh, it says in, 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 in Colossians chapter 1, verse 6, yeah, it says, Which has come to you, as it has also in all the world, and is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God 
in truth. The grace of God in truth. We celebrate the grace of God here. We celebrate the grace of God. We will not shy away from the grace of God. We are not uh, a church that shies away from the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ because that's the gospel. Uh, and the gospel of grace is not supposed to be something that is labeled uh, a different gospel. Uh, because grace is what the gospel is. That's what the gospel is all about. So we will not shy away from that. We will teach and emphasize the grace of God along with faith in Christ Jesus. We already said that last week. Uh, so if you, we are not, uh, we're not going to say, oh, uh, you know, uh, we, we, are, we, are, we, we teach uh, faith here. We emphasize faith here. Uh, or we emphasize grace here. You know, that lopsided approach to things. By the grace of God, uh, we will not be a church like that. We will do our best to make sure that we are teaching these things uh, as, as, as things that work hand in hand. We understand that faith and grace are not different camps, but they are, they are concepts that God has given us that are supposed to work together. Uh, because grace is basically God's part in the equation, while faith is our own part of the equation. So faith, uh, grace makes and then faith takes. So grace is everything that, that God has done in Christ, the finished works of Jesus, that is grace. But faith is how you receive that. So if you teach people just the grace of God and you don't teach them faith, you are doing them a disservice. But if you are, if you are emphasizing faith and always just teaching faith, but you don't let people understand that faith is the way that you take what God has prepared for us in Christ, you are also doing them a disservice. So that is very, very important. So when grace says you are healed, for instance, uh, in response, all, all faith will do is to say thank you. I believe it and I receive it. That's the way this thing works. So if, if grace says, says you are loved, faith's response is to say thank you. I believe it. I receive it. If grace says you are, you are forgiven, faith says thank you. I receive it. I believe it. That's what this is. That, that's the equation. So they work together and, and we must see it that way and approach it like that. All right, And that's what we're going to be doing by the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to verse 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. This is the gospel, guys. This is, this is the gospel in a nutshell. It is by grace that we have been saved. Through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we are people that understand the grace of God. We understand that we have been saved by the grace of God. Uh, I, I heard a very uh, interesting illustration of grace from one of my, my role models in ministry uh, this week. Uh, he was preaching a sermon in, in his church and he shared this illustration that this, this is what the grace of God basically is. Uh, that there is a test that we need to write uh, because in the, the, the laws of Moses uh, are 613 <laughs> laws that you have to keep in order to be perfect. So this is, this is what, how he described uh, grace and I so love it. It is so so, so correct and accurate. Uh, he said, we are, we are about to take this test, but the truth of the matter is, God says, you are about to take this test. The only way to pass this test is to get all 613 correct. If you miss one, you have missed everything. Because if you, if you offend in one of the laws of Moses, you have offended in everything. So, you have two options. You, are, you, you can take the test yourself, all right? But let me assure you, you have already missed 600 of the 613. <laughs> All right, even before you take it, you have already missed 600 because the Bible says all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. So you have already missed it. Uh, but you can attempt to take it by yourself and see what you, you will score. Or on the other hand, my son has already taken this test and he has gotten 613 over 613. <laughs> he didn't miss anything. I can give you his score <laughs> to take and use his, his score. Or you can attempt to do it yourself. Which one do you want? That's grace. That's the gospel. That's what God is calling us to, to say, Jesus has done the work for us, uh, the work of making us righteous before God. He has done that work for us. Are we going to accept it or are we going to try to, in our own, you know, in our own way, try to make that thing work now, try to fulfill all the law of Moses uh, in order to be, to be perfect before God, not be blameless before God. So this is what grace is all about. Now, this is our assignment here as Believers Heritage Ministries, to help believers grow and mature in faith and the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's our mandate. Uh, heritage is what belongs to us in Christ. That's what it is, our inheritance. That's what that word heritage is all about. And that's all the grace of God has made available to us. All right, look at John chapter 1 verse 14. Let me show you another dimension to it. Now, the reason why I took my time to explain grace 
right? so that you understand that we, we understand it. We know what the grace of God is. But there is another dimension of it. And this is what is largely missing in the gospel of grace that is out there. This is what is missing in it. Now, John chapter 1 verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is John, the disciple that probably knew Jesus the most. Uh, he called himself the disciple whom the Lord loved. Uh, so he said, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Then he says, Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Jesus is full of grace and truth. So we would emphasize the grace of God along with the truth of the gospel. It is not a one-sided message of grace. It's not a lopsided approach to grace to say all you have to do is, is accept Jesus and it doesn't matter how you live your life or it doesn't matter you know, what you do. Right? The, 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 the finished works of Jesus did not, did not say that we, we cannot have good character. All right? The laws of Moses is not about you, you having good character, the fruit of the Spirit. That's not what it is. The laws of Moses are the things that you are supposed to do. Keep the Sabbath. Don't eat pork. Don't do this. Don't do that. Wash here. Wash there. Those are the laws of Moses. The laws of Moses are, or Jesus coming to die for us did not take away the place of character, of, of Christians being like Christ. Behaving like Christ, coming into that place where you can, you can actually act like Christ would act in any given situation. So that's what we're talking about. And this is very important. This is a very important emphasis that is not in this gospel that people preach today. You know, and, and it is it is very, very dangerous. It's a dangerous gospel. So we have to be careful that Jesus was full of grace and truth. And there are some people who you know preach truth, truth, truth to, to the exception of grace, and they, they, they preach it so hard that. It no longer looks realistic. People feel like, I can't do this, like if this is what it is. So there has to be a balance between grace and truth because that is what Jesus was full of. Jesus was full of grace and he was full of truth. All right, so this is, this is very, very important. And, and of course, this is just, a, uh, this is just uh, uh, like a synopsis that I'm giving today, but we will continue to teach these things, you know. We'll continue to teach these things and clarify these things. We will emphasize the grace of God along with the truth of the gospel, the truth is that you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. That is the truth. The truth is that he came and he died for your sins uh, and he has paid the price. He has paid the price and all you need to do is to accept him into your life as your Lord and, and your Savior. You need to believe that he, he died and to, and to receive him into your heart. Uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Uh, Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And then Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. So we're giving you an opportunity again this week. Uh, you may be watching this long after we have gone off air, months after even, but this is a moment of destiny because you're not listening to this by accident. You're not watching this by accident. You may even be driving and be listening to the podcast. However, you're, you're listening to me. As long as you are under the sound of my voice, God is calling you to give your heart over to the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to say that prayer with me and to become a child of God today, uh, just bow your, 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 your head. If you are not driving, okay, uh, if you are at home, just bow your head and close your eyes wherever you are and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God sent you to die for my sins. I confess with my mouth that he raised you from the dead on the third day. I am saved. I receive Jesus into my life today. Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, I receive you. Say it again. Say, I receive the Holy Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. You are now a child of God. You are now a child of God. It's as simple as that. That prayer you said has shifted you from the kingdom of darkness, the Bible says, into the kingdom of his dear son. So I want to congratulate you. Thank you so much for saying that prayer. Thank you so much for saying that prayer. Let's, let's hear from you. Uh, let's, let's know what God has done for you, all right? Just reach out to us and let us know that you said that prayer, okay? And if you are, if you are in the city of Halifax, Nova Scotia, uh, and you need a Bible-believing church, reach out to us uh, and, and we, will be, we will be glad, we'll be so glad to welcome you into the family of God. Uh, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you.
Okay, so uh, thank you so much, the rest of you, for, for, for staying with us till this time. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Don't forget what we've been saying. Next week, we're going to be here. We're going to be here. We're not going to be online. We're going to be right in this building, uh, 1555 Lucas View Road in Amon's Plains, Nova Scotia. It's right on Amon's Plains Road. So just look it up on, on Google. You'll be able to find it very, very, very easily. We have parking space out there. Uh, this building is going, to, is going to take every single one of us. So it's not a problem whatsoever. We will socially distance uh, and we will be able to have uh, what we are now calling our family meeting. Okay, because we are, we are not extending too many invitations to, to, to other people. Uh, we just want to get, get to meet first, you know, and just see ourselves. I mean, we've been meeting online. People have been reaching out to us individually, but we want everybody to come together and, you know, try to you know, get to know everyone uh, and, and let's fellowship together in that way. And we will do that every four or five weeks and we will announce it, okay? And we will do that every four or five weeks and then we'll come back online. So we're going to do, do this next week. We will meet here for our family meeting. Uh, we will not stream that online. We will not stream it live because we want everybody to be free to, you know, express themselves and just be, be themselves. We're not going to show people's faces or anything like that. We'll probably show highlights of the message, you know, after the fact, okay? So we'll put it up later on. So subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, so that you know when we upload that video and you can watch it. Uh, but it won't be here on uh, 2 o'clock. We will be inside this building meeting in person. Uh, and we'll follow all the safety guidelines. We'll have masks, we'll have sanitizers, and all of that, you know, good stuff, okay? Uh, so that's next week. And then after that, the, the week after, we'll come back online and we will, we will continue this way. And then we'll just build that up that way until we are able to, all of us meet, uh, uh, you know, start meeting on Sunday mornings as a build up to the launch of, of our church. So I want to thank you once again. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time uh, to always join us. If you're, you're not in, in our city, but you always take the time to watch, we thank God for you. Well, I don't feel like you, you're not doing anything. You are actually helping us in a, in a lot of ways. So we thank God for you. Uh, share this the video of the service with someone, you know, uh, share it on your social media platforms, on your, you know, WhatsApp or on your Facebook or whatever it is, you know, and let people, uh, other people be able to watch the service, all right? So that's the major announcement for this week. The other announcements that I want to make, I, I would rather make it uh, to the family, okay? So next Sunday, I will tell you all of the things that are coming, uh, the, the plans that we have, and you can, you can come in here and see this, see this space, see all the things that we still have to do here. Uh, because this building needs a lot of love. <laughs> like I said, it needs, it needs a lot of love. Okay, I will start with this red wall. I don't like this wall. So <laughs> we're going to start. My friend, uh, my friend Peter said, when, he, when, when I told him about the red wall, he said, I, we should just look at it as the blood of Jesus. <laughs> and I said, no, no, this one is not the blood of Jesus. I don't, this is the first thing that's going to go away. No, right? So that we can you know, just get this place uh, to look, you know, look even better than it looks already. And yeah, it does look good. It's a decent space. And we thank God for it. Uh, but we'll just, you know, make it a, a bit better. And more importantly, we're going to be meeting to pray. Uh, we're going to be meeting to pray. It's a 21-day journey, but uh, it's going to be a unique one. We're not just going to pray 21 days uh, prayer and fasting, but I would explain how we're going to go about this uh, to, to make it something really unique. Uh, that we'll be coming in here and we'll be praying just to make sure that we brought this entire thing in prayer. All right, so that's about it for today. Uh, don't forget to register to come for the service. You know, go on to the website and register. It's very important that you do that. The government requires us to do that. So please make sure you do that so that we know that you're coming. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we will see you the week after next week online, okay? But next week, we will be here in, in person. So if you're in, in, in Halifax, uh, that gathering is for those that already know about our church, okay? So if you're watching this, you already know. So if you want to come, you're free to, as long as you register, all right? So it's uh, a first interest meeting where we will be talking about the church as well and, you know, just helping people to understand what we're doing here. Uh, and people just get to know one another. Okay, so let's say a word of prayer and then we will, we will close the service for today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for this amazing service. We, we thank you for this space. We thank you for this place that we are in today. We are so grateful, Lord. We thank you for one step at a time as you lead us towards this, you know, this, this, this journey, the establishment of this church. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We ask, oh God, that you will help us this week, that you will lead us, go before us, make the crooked places straight. Uh, let your name be glorified in our lives this week in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, guys. God bless you. I will see you in person next week, and then we will be back online the week after. God bless you.